greetings in his precious name. My name is Brian Mason, and this is the first part of the Bible study called Lord Evermore Giveth This Bread. And that is from St. John's Gospel, chapter 6 and verse 34. He did quite something, something so wonderful that the people were so moved that they wanted to have the bread which Jesus spoke about. Lord, evermore give unto us this bread. Now, I turn right, right back to the beginning of St. John's Gospel in chapter 6 and make our way forward over these, these three Bible studies. Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. So, here we are. Great multitudes were following Jesus. They'd seen him. They'd heard him and they wanted to follow him. And Jesus went up into a mountain and there sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. Jesus, when he lifted up his eyes and so a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, when we buy bread, that these may eat. Here he was, up in the mountain. And we told, well, vast multitudes had come. They'd come to hear him. They were hungering after hearing his teachings. Here was someone that they had, had come into contact with who was so different from the religious leaders of the day, the religious teachers of the day. They were, were as it were, dry. They had nothing to offer. But Jesus had life to offer. And because of this, the people were drawn to him. They wanted to know more and more about him and about what he had to give them. So, he was Philip and Jesus asking him, because of the great multitude, Jesus, yes, he had compassion upon the multitude. And he knew that because they were wanting to spend time with him, spending to spend hours listening to him, that they would grow hungry. And Jesus was conscious that it wasn't only the teaching of the spiritual, but he was taking care too that they were fed physically, that they had sustenance of life, that they weren't, as it were, going to faint by the wayside. They weren't going to faint listening to Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful Jesus we have, that he, he considers every aspect of our life. And what did Jesus say? Yes, to Philip, when shall we buy bread that these may eat? Jesus, we're told, uh, this he said to prove Philip, for he himself knew what he would do. Jesus knew that he was going to meet the very needs of these people. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them 
may take a little. Yes, of course, Philip, although he'd been with Jesus like the other disciples, had been with him now for quite some time. But he, his thoughts were still in the natural. His thoughts were very much centered upon human answers. And he had not, as it were, that trust in Jesus himself, that Jesus would know what was required. And then we have one of the other disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, who said, well, there's a lad here which have five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what, are they among so many? Well, it didn't matter whether there was a, the, the, the lad had a vast supply or just a few loaves and fishes. There have been those who uh, have, have questioned in the past. Those who don't, will not take the word of God literally. Those who will come up and try and talk away the word of God. Even it has been said that, oh, the lad had, the, lo the, the loaves were so large in those days that there would have been large enough to have fed so, so vast a company of people. But yet what are we told? That this was a, a what? A young lad. Coming what, what, with his basket, no doubt. He'd have a job carrying five huge loaves in his basket. Ah, but, but, do you take the word of God literally? Are you like some who've been now for many, many years, who've re question the word of God, have refused to take it literally, to more or less uh, try and take away that supernatural aspect to the word of God. That Jesus, the supernatural manifestation of God, during his life on earth, well he did, he did, he manifested the supernatural life and power of God. And are we accepting that in these days? That is what God wants us to take hold of. That what the Word of God says is absolutely true. In ev along every line not to try and belittle it, to try and take away that supernatural power in the Word of God. So, with this, what did Jesus do? He, he wasn't put off uh, by hearing that the, the lad, there was a lad there with five loaves and what? Two fishes? A few fishes? No, no. He knew that no matter whether it was one loaf and one fish, he would have still been able to do the same as he did. And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number. What? About five thousand. Not fifty or five hundred, five thousand, about five thousand. Oh, that's quite some number. But Jesus was not daunted. No, he knew that he had within him that authority, that power, that believing, that faith which would bring into being 
what was required to feed, naturally feed, all this company, that not one of them would go without. In fact, we're told that later on that there was plenty left afterwards. Jesus is the one of abundance. I am come that ye might have life and that ye might have it more abundantly. Life, that aspect of God, the indwelling God within us, the life of God within us. And he will go on later in this chapter to explain not just the, the literal bread, the physical bread, but the very life of God, the spiritual bread the spiritual life, which is what is found in himself and received through himself. And Jesus took the loaves. Oh, can we, can you picture that? There he was, somewhere up this mountain, looking down, and this vast company of about 5,000 men were there. And they, what they will be looking at Jesus, taking hold of the loaves and seeing Jesus bringing an abundance of bread which would feed every one of them at that time, that day, meeting their physical hunger. And when he had given thanks, isn't it quite, quite wonderful to think? There was Jesus, and he was giving thanks, what? To the Father. Thanking the Father that the Father would had heard him and that the loaves as it were, were were growing they were becoming as he would break them they would not there would be more and more and more bread to meet everyone He distributed to the disciples and his disciples to them that were set down and likewise of the fishes as much as they would so they could eat the bread and the fish as much as they wanted. It was there. And are we as hungry for Jesus? Have we that spiritual hunger for him that he becomes the very life of us that out, even outside of what we might receive in this life is he more to us than, than life itself Are we hungering? Are we thirsting after him? Is he fully satisfying us? Every day and throughout the day, in the midst of, of what could be trials, testings for you, that he's still there and he becomes your very life. He becomes the dwelling of you. That's what God created, created you for. That he might indwell you. He might fill you with his, his own life. Yes, the filling of the Father to our spirits, that he speaks to our spirits. 
Jesus within our hearts, speaking to our souls, to our hearts. And the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the one who relates to our bodies, the rest of us. He indwells us, that we become the temple of the Holy Ghost. That every part of God, Father, Son and Holy Ghost, when the triune God comes and dwells within us, relates to some part of us, relates to a spirit, soul, and body. I don't want wandering off, but there we are. Um, verse 12. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Oh, he is so precious, is Jesus. We don't want to lose anything, lose out on anything. And it is that life, the life which, which what? The life which satisfies. Because how can there be satisfaction in life upon earth when there is that rejection of the one who created us and the one who created us for his own purpose. And that purpose is to, to fill us, to indwell us with himself and to, for his life to, us, to have fellowship with him. Yes, to walk with him, to talk with him. To know that God himself is, is life, is life abundant. And unless you have received that life, you will never be satisfied. The world will never satisfy you. Nothing in this world will satisfy you. Only God will. It's coming to God on his terms. His terms what? His terms are that we receive life. Any, everything that God gives us comes through death. Through death. Yes, as Jesus spoke to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Well, we have to be dead, to be first of all, to be born again. The old life, the old nature goes to the cross to receive a new life, the life of God. Coming back to this, that they gathered them together and filled what twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, oh, they'd seen all this, they'd witnessed it, and they'd received that which had filled their natural hunger. They'd seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth, that prophet that shall come, should come into the world. They knew their scriptures then. And they recognized in Jesus that he was different. He was fulfilling that expectation that there would be a prophet and more than a prophet there would be the Messiah of the people who would come and they saw that Jesus was fulfilling the scriptures fulfilling the conditions but at the end of that day what happened? yes the people would have dispersed but what did Jesus do? He'd had, remember, he'd had a very full day, 
not just uh, the miracle with the loaves and fishes, but undoubtedly had been teaching these dear, dear people, teaching them from the scriptures. And he went because they were, were looking, yes, that they recognized, oh, this is the one who's to come, and what, what were they likely to do? They were to come to take him by force, and Jesus knew that this was not his time. He had not come at, this t at that particular time, that particular moment, to be a king for, of Israel. He departed again into a mountain himself. Yes, he came aside. He wanted to be alone. Alone to be able to communicate with his father, to pray to the father, to receive more and more of the life which he needed to sustain him upon earth. That spiritual contact with the father. And when even was now come, his disciples went down unto the sea and entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark, and Jesus was not come to them. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship and they were afraid. No doubt uh, anyone would have been afraid if they'd have been there rowing on the sea and there was someone coming walking along on the sea. But Jesus, yes, he said unto them, It is I. Be not afraid. Even in the storms of life, when we have Jesus, as it were, in the ship, and our bodies the ship, our, our beings, our lives the ship, where he dwells within our hearts. Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. And then I just set the scene for Part two, for tomorrow, the day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save that one wherewith into his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. Howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh in unto the place where they did eat bread. After that the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. And then Jesus said, Labor not for the meat which perisheth. Yes, the people would, would know that that bread in time would have gone mouldy and were not fit to eat. But for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Well, we're not told what he told about on that first day. But on the second day, 
we're moving into some of the some very very deep spiritual truths and those we will start to consider in part two father thank thee from the very depths of the heart that in your son Jesus you have provided the living bread and that he who says I am the bread of life is the one and the only one who will fully satisfy the human heart because in in God himself is found life and life becomes the life of those whom you indwell and may in these days lost souls be so drawn by thyself to thy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that they will be brought under the conviction of their sins and find in Jesus true repentance and through true repentance to find the life of God becoming their life dwelling within them. For this is as Father, in the name which you cannot deny, that of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that you shall be glorified through the Son. Amen.